It is interesting returning to Venice after 20 years. Seemingly nothing has changed here, but I'm not the same than those days. Today I look at Venice with different eyes. Venice is like an open-air museum, but it does not give the impression of a living city. In this respect, it is unique in the world. Today, it has no function except for tourism, of course, it lost its commercial and political role a long time ago. If you look below the surface, it's a dead world. Today, Venice is not fighting for great power status or commercial supremacy, but for mere survival. Survival against the flood. A sad and melancholic feeling comes over me as I walk these ancient streets like a fossil of a vanished world. However, I feel lucky to still be able to see it in this form. Nature always takes back what is hers. Nature knows no boundaries and has no regard for monuments either. It has no respect for human architecture, as sad as it sounds. But eventually, entropy always triumphs over any human endeavor. Venice's time seems to have come. This time, it does not lose its status as a great power and its political independence as in the past. But the fight against the brute force of nature. Millions of tourists visit this city every year. What can go through their minds while walking through these lagoons? Whether were their children, grandchildren, and future generations see it as they do now? Will they see it whatsoever? Yet Venice has retained something of its former glory. Its atmosphere, which is second to none in the world, even after centuries. The incredible charisma of the city reflected in its faded but still sumptuous building. It's one of my favorite cities in the world, and that hasn't changed after two decades. I found it stylish to start my voyage across Eurasia here, as so many travelers over centuries, including Marco Polo. I crossed the San Marco Square, heading the train station. The strong Italian sun does not spare me, but I'm enjoying the first and last day of my trip in Venice. While I'm still here, it takes an hour to walk from the square to the Santa Lucia train station where I intend to leave Venice. This is the last year I can travel here without mandatory pre-registration. This rule comes into action in the beginning of the next year because Venice suffers not only a flood of the sea, but of the flood of tourists as well. Now the government tries to control this flood either. The sunset is approaching and soon I have to say goodbye to this unique place at this moment. I'm just standing on this old bridge and looking at the city, the atmosphere of which is different every part of the day. I'll be somewhere else tomorrow. I take one last look at the only city in Italy that did not exist in antiquity before my train departs via Rome for Bari. My journey to the south takes a whole day. But the ferry that takes me over the sea leaves at afternoon. If I miss it, I'll have to wait until tomorrow afternoon. At least I have the opportunity to enjoy the scenic and romantic landscapes of Italy on the way. In the early afternoon, I am already in another world in the south. 
We are now traveling along the coast of the Adriatic Sea, all the way to Bari. Luckily for me, walking through the city, I reached the port in time. I'm leaving Italy. I spent the whole night on the ferry, and this majestic sight greeted me in the morning. Half of the passengers disembarked at the port of Igumenitsa now. There is plenty of place on the ferry now. I'm spending my time with walking through over the deck. The sea is calm now. I'm alone with my thoughts now, and I can't stop thinking about my trans-Asian voyage all the time. This is not my first long trip though. I intend to visit so many places where I have been to a long time ago. I visit old friends I haven't seen in a while. Always while walking, the best and worst thoughts come to me, both hopes and concerns. New opportunities and new dangers. Will I find these long lost acquaintances and friends? How will they receive me? Do they still remember me? Such a trip is an extremely intense experience. As noon approaches, we get closer and closer to the Greek islands along the coast. Once upon a time Odysseus could also see these islands in search of his beloved home. This is also one of those places in the world that have not changed much for thousands of years and the sea shows its increasingly blue face as the day progresses. Everywhere I look, I can see nothing but the endless calm of the sea. I fell in love with this calmness, which you can experience a very few places nowadays. It is no coincidence that my journey begins by crossing the Mediterranean which will lead to another incomparably calm and majestic place in the Himalayas at the roof of the world. Empires come, empires go, rise, flourish, decline and fall. In the end, every one of them goes where it belongs in the textbooks but the place where it takes place is eternal. Countries come, countries go, like fossils of human vanity. But everyone has only one life, only one chance to live. I involuntarily think now that many people suffer and die from wars in a world where a slogan is worth more than a human life without even once having the opportunity to experience this endless peace, what only nature can provide. Welcome to Greece. It's time for me to finish this monologue and leave. See you next time.